Right, hello. Uh, this is going to be a quick video, or at least it's hopefully going to be quick enough, of the Hotpoint 9530W. And I'm going to be doing program number six, which is a quick wash, um, which is half load and a condo wash. So. Right. right, back to start. So, um, let me go ahead and set the program. Program number six. Economy wash, half load, and um, I will actually use a little bit of detergent, even though I don't really want to, but I'll use. Thirty milliliters of aerial. It's not even something I really have to wash. I'm just going to do a little demonstration. So um, that's thirty milliliters of aerial, and I'll go ahead and put that in the main wash compartment. So I'll go ahead, get the camera ready. Excuse all that on top of the dryer. That's just things I need to sort out. So in the main wash sort of towards the back because the water pressure if it's around the front it will just stay there with the powder so then pop that over there and the doors on top of there are just there as a temporary thing but of course uh no fabric softener or anything shut the drawer shut the drawer um and yeah let's go ahead we just the camera angle a little bit. Close the door. Three, two, one. That's already done. So, um, move right, it up a little. Hold to the angle so the glare isn't so bad if I can. Yeah, that seems good. I might just go ahead and. Uh, Then move it a little bit. Sort of perhaps we need to uh, sort of pump it up a little bit. Alright. Oh wait, it kind of does a little bit. Oh well, whatever. I do have a tripod, but I'm just not going to use it. So, that'll be good enough. Or should I just go and do the back? Yeah, I would say moving it back sort of works. There we go. So, program number six is 40 degree uh, acrylics and wool mixtures. But it can also be used as a quick wash if you select, obviously, half load and economy wash, which doesn't turn on the heating element at all. It's taken all that powder, which is good. I always check. Well, I nearly always check. Sometimes I don't, sometimes I do. Just depends. So, that's off. I've got 49 minutes of... Uh, camera footage to go so I'm not even too sure if I'll have to um, combine them or something you know with the, if it separates it into parts I'm not sure so I guess I'll just go ahead and give it a chance machines fully restored of course 100% working um, it's in visibly very good condition uh, apart from a little bit of rust in quite a few places, but it's okay, other than that it's absolutely fine. Everything works, motor, heater, everything. Not even putting on a common wash, because even if you use warm water, or well, hot water, this machine barely does anything with it, and it only ups temperature by about sort of 20-25 degrees. 
and I'm not even doing this for any reason other than just a little bit of a demo, so yeah, I guess um, seems uh, to be a good idea. motor bearings did go a bit funny a couple of days ago on this. It's fine though, or it did seem okay after a couple of um, spins, so it should be okay. And it's got the fishbowl door glass, although it might look completely different. There is obviously the fishbowl glass on this machine, 100% rounded, so I'll probably make um, a video of the washer dryer doing a quick wash as well because I think I'll make this a little bit of a of a thing, just a little bit of a demonstration purpose type of thing. And also, it just means to just sort of get the machines going a little tiny bit. I do not use quick washers. I despise them really. Um, but for these kinds of purposes, I just prefer to do it because it's quite a lot of fun. So yeah, there's that, but as well as that, um, I do have um, Jack Padgett, aka Laundry Lad 1400, has asked, has asked me to film the daily quick cycle on my Beko, so I can go and race his his uh, WTK, so I might as well go ahead and do that. But this is a, a bit of a comparison as well, because I've no idea how long this quick wash is actually going to take. Um, it says around half an hour. But these do vary. They can go up to 45 minutes or something like that. It just depends. I've, I've, I actually don't know. Um, but with this, it's economy wash and half load, so there's nothing that can really go wrong if. Uh, well, hang on a minute there. Well, ha what? <laughs> no, probably a minute. But oh well. I wonder what that was. The machine started draining slightly, and uh... oh yeah, it's yeah, it's obviously this phase. I know what the phase is. It's um, a sort of a stepped cool down for synthetics, but that was strange. I'm not sure if it's supposed to do that because it started distributing at a, like 15 or so seconds. I have no idea if this machine is supposed to do that. I've got no clue. But I'm guessing it's a thing. Um, I don't use the synthetic side at all. I, I, I just don't use it. So uh, I don't know why. But I've never used the Woolen cycle on this line by 3 for some reason. Don't ask, because I couldn't tell you. I've got no idea. Um, there's also, well, I mainly use Program 1 and Program, well, I've only really, I only really use Program 1 and 2 along with the rinses and the spin on the cotton side. But I do really want to give this thing like a rinse hold demonstration at some point on a rin uh, on the synthetics rinse because this is the only side, this is somehow the only side of the program dial where there's that bow tie. And that bow tie means you can select rinse hold. So that means rinse hold. Now don't get fooled on the pre-wash because that does not hold. Even though, well, it does hold. But for some reason, you have to advance it manually, which is really weird. So, the washer dryer, if you put it on the pre-wash and it ends the pre-wash, you can turn it on and off a little bit, and it'll actually advance past the uh, pre-wash, the end of the pre-wash, which is really weird. Um, yeah, it's still kind of fun. Um, I won't be doing anything 
in the realm of drying demos on the washer dryer because the fan is contacting the outer tub again. Uh, well, it, it happened when I did the bearings on it, but I haven't adjusted that far enough. So I don't want to readjust the condenser. So I'm not sure what to do on that. But it just starts very slightly contacting the outer tub, the blades of the fan. And it's only the tips, you can just barely hear it over the sound of the actual fan. It's really annoying. But oh well. Um, oh well. This is incredibly strange. This is a really weird thing because I, I, I swear these are supposed to go straight into distribution or something. I've got no idea. But it doesn't matter because I'm not going to be using this. So there's that. But hey, it's not the worst. Um, I do want to get the 9544 W back working. The thing is, it's super, super, super annoying because I cannot, for the life of me, find a front plate. Now, I'm, I'm going to ask if anybody has a front plate for one of these with the thick rim drum, please tell me or tell me the name of whoever it is on whatever social media because I I seriously need one I've got everything else I've done the bearings on it I've done all sorts of things but this bloody front plate is really really annoying me it's not it's not normal for well it is normal for manufacturers to discontinue the hell out of parts but when they're just mucking about with things like this, you know, vital parts that you're going to need is completely ridiculous. So anybody that, uh, you know, anybody that has anything, you know, front plates or anything like that, um, tell me and hit me up because I will make an Instagram post, I'll make everything. Gumtree, all sorts of things. Facebook Marketplace, if I can. Because I seriously need one. And... Worst case scenario, I am going to have to put a dreaded 5 kilogram drum in that thing, which I do not want to do because I love it as it is with a 4.1. But if I absolutely have to, then I'm going to, then, and no, you know, no one has one new or used or whatever, still in the packaging or just off a of scrap 9.5 or anything, then I'm going to have to put a 5 kilogram drum in it, which... I hate it. Um, I did that once. Or I, I did that once or twice um, where I just couldn't find anything. The inner drum, I didn't even understand how to restore it back then. So I had a 5kg drum laying around, so I just thought, why not? And it was uh, really bad from the start. Um, the machine leaked from the heating element and it tripped out. The heating element popped out, and it destroyed the drum it had, so, yeah, there is that. In fact, it's just sitting beside me now, the drum from the 9.5, uh, from the 9, well, it was from a WM14, but the drum's basically just sitting here, still, it's just sort of being used as a washing basket now. Um, and that was a failure, so I put another 5kg drum in it which was from my WM22. I don't even understand why I took it apart in the first place. Can't remember. But I put that in there and it didn't work the second time because I did the shock, uh, did the suspension legs on it. And whilst I was doing the suspension legs, I took the fascia off and all the buttons. But the thing is, the actual switch bank behind the buttons was still on the machine, completely exposed. So when I put it face down, and flipped it over on itself to do the shock absorbers. Yes, I know, really, really stupid, 
But the thing is though, the machine was completely stripped of all the actual panels and things. So it didn't have its front panel, top panel or anything. It just had the bare metal and all that exposed. And I did that and the switch bank broke. So I spent a couple of months trying to find one. I finally found a switch bank, put it on and completely forgot about um, a connection. And I thought it was something really wrong with the timer or something. Can't remember. Um... That happened, uh, took the machine apart to, stripped it down basically to fix the WM22 all the way back up during lockdown. Uh, the first one, which I basically said, well, I'm in lockdown, but I still decided, you know, still managed to do this. Showed off the WM22 a little bit. Um, and yeah, there's that. Uh, there's also, and then I found, well, then I found the connection, which... I just thought, what the hell? Yeah, I constantly do that with my fingers in there. I'm gonna wet the side trims and keep on doing it. It's not good. I need to stop that. Um, yeah, so I uh, that was accidental, you know, with the the connection thing. Um, oh yeah, I tried to reuse the original heating element. Really really stupid idea like beyond idiotic so I the seal had a little sort of it went it went like a valley type of thing so it was like the seals meant to be straight but over time like the two ends of it had been compressed so much that they bowed outwards and I couldn't refit it so I just chopped the crap out of the seal trying to get it back in but it just leaked everywhere I tried a really terrible idea of whacking some silicone all over it and seeing if that helped. Jumpies! My 530 is gonna go jumpies! Oh god. I hate it when this thing does it. It's like a rabid dog. Sound like a bloody chihuahua. It's all on one side. It's not even too much though, so I should probably jump once now again. Yeah. There's barely any weight in that, and I'd be surprised if she actually jumped. Although I'm not even too sure if they actually do a spin on this. I have no idea. Nope, they don't. They just distribute. Well, actually, not all of it was on one side. So yeah, there is that, but there's also... As I was saying uh, about all of that, um, I did a really crappy silicone repair job with this, with that um, heating element that failed and that's how it popped out or something like that, I can't remember. Actually, actually no, I pulled it out of the front plate and I put a new 2100 watt heating element in. Yes, I know, it's really dumb. It was just a thing where it just said suitable for WM and 95 series machines and whatever and I just thought hell might as well go with it and have the thermostat on it and the actual little uh let me go and grab it, an element and show you this. Yeah so this is the element, uh, uh, obviously not from the 9544, this is just a generic 2500 watt element with um, the sort of attachment for the thermal fuse which goes in through there and sort of just sits in this little sort of compartment. Now this on the 9544's element had come off so you could literally just remove it. Uh, I don't know if it was supposed to be like soldered or welded on or something, but it just wasn't attached or anything, so it just came off. So I went ahead and decided to fit that, that little thing, to this heating element, which was 2,100 watts or something like that, 2,000, can't remember. Um, and I uh, ended up doing that fitting it properly enough so that it didn't leak but the seal went 
Now the element popped out a good few inches and it got enough over so that the guard on which, like the thing here, which is like a heating element bracket, which keeps the front of the element from coming up and hitting the inner drum. The element tipped backwards, pulled the guard upwards, and it shredded into the outer drum. Uh, it shredded into the outer tub. It didn't act well, it didn't technically shred, it just sort of dented the absolute shit out of the tub, uh, out of the inner drum. So there was that, and there's also the thing of I thought of getting rid of it, which was a stupid idea. Really, really, really stupid. I mean, thank God I didn't go through with it. It's just sitting at the end of the garage, still in a state of restoration slash disrepair. So there's that. And me and my infinite wisdom decided to go ahead, go parts searching and actually try and find a genuine heating element. And my eBay skills were just terrible back then. So I ended up getting rid of all that. Um... And I stripped the machine down, I think, or something like that. Got the outer tub out of it and all that, and whatever. And then, this little beauty came along, the 9530, and I had the same issue with the heating element. The first issue, which was, the heating element just would not go in. It would, it, not in actually no not exactly the element actually ended up failing or something like that i can't remember but i ended up um dragging it out but i didn't go ahead and you know just drag it out the usual way of untighten it and you know use a fired screwdriver i was a real idiot and completely forgot the UK thread. Like, I had no idea what I, I have no idea to this day what I was doing. But I ended up tightening this element so much that it cracked the front plate. I have no idea, and it's not, I doubt it's repairable. So it's just sitting there now. As a cracked open front plate, just sort of sitting there, feeling really sorry for myself, and I felt like crap. Luckily, I had the one from the 9544, so I cleaned that up and put it on this, and that's the front plate on this machine. Now, I don't know what the fuck I was thinking, but I was a real idiot. Never told anyone about it, but I'm coming clean about it now. Um, there's also... What else? When I first got the 9544, I must admit, it was machine number four. Now, machine, now, they're the only, the, oh, yep, ne very nearly going jumpies. Um, yeah, I just said jumpies, I don't know why. This said basically it's very nearly jumpy. So I basically just, I'm just going to say this. Out of those four machines, four first, out of those first four machines, only two of them are still with me. For the reason of, they were both, uh, the two in between, the WM22 was the first, and the 9544 was obviously the fourth. The other two were a, a Hookpoint WM14W, which was 800 RPM. The bearings were beyond shot to pieces, and I mean it, they were completely clapped. Like, I swear to God, if they were on a, like, if that was an engine in a car, the engine would probably just explode. That was how entirely destroyed these bearings were. Um, also, the machine had a few other faults, such as the motor. The motor brushes had worn out pretty badly. The armature was damaged. Um, the motor bearings had gone really dry, and they just completely worn all the way out. So the motor sounded awful. Uh, in fact, you could barely hear it over the bearing noise. Um, the timer was erratic. The, well, the timer was completely messed up. I can't remember. I don't know if it was a timer or the speed module or, what, or whatever. But the machine just randomly 
went to 500 RPM completely out of the blue and all sorts of that. That kind of stuff, you know, right in the middle of a wash, it would go to 500 RPM or so, or whatever, and try to destroy itself. And that's why I decided to strip it down. Um, and there is the outer tub from it, and the inner drum, and a couple of other, li well, pretty much everything from it. The panels and everything. The cabinet got scrapped because it was just destroyed. There was nothing left of it. Um, and there was all that, got rid of that, uh, eventually, but, there was a weird, and I must admit, a very strange cycle where I went through four months, and every month, well actually no, I think it was three months, every month I get another machine. I get how weird this sounds. I had, I have no idea. It wasn't planned or anything. It was just, hey, I found a vintage washer. It's sort of about an hour away. Do you want to go? You know, you know, do you want to go get it? I'll spend my pocket money. That kind of thing. And mum just went ahead and said, yeah, yeah, let's go ahead and do that. You know, that kind of thing. And it was three months of that. The October of. 2019 I think it was yes yeah 2019 I got the 9544 and the machine was just gone like the, the bearings had collapsed the drum spider was basically well the bearings had gone really bad so they very nearly collapsed the drum spider I'm guessing had basically already snapped but lime scale was basically just holding it together. Uh, it didn't snap on me, but I dropped it on the ground uh, a few weeks after I took it out of the machine, and just one of the legs just snapped off it completely, which was a very big surprise because I just thought, how close can you get to a spider snapping on you? So I did that, and the 4.1 kg drum. It was reveal. It was in the classics reveal. The reveal of the classic side of the collection. My first, the first video of my actual collection of machines, um, and it was weird because it had a five kg drum in it, and it was really weird because the heating element hadn't gone yet. The twenty five hundred watt one that was in there, that the seal had gone in, but I just snipped the crap out of it. It was pissing water everywhere, but I just thought it it'll be okay. Like, in my 14-year-old idiocy, I thought, it'll be absolutely fine. No, it wasn't. It was not fine. It was beyond fine. It was beyond not fine. In fact, it was so not fine, it was stupid. Completely, in fact, it was, it was just... I was just an arse. I was an idiot. The leak happened, whipped the element out. The silicone hadn't even dried yet. Like, 90% of it was still wet. So I got it all over my hands at all. Um, whacked a new element in it and thought, hey, might as well do something with that. You know, whatever. Blah, blah, blah. New element. The element pops out and whatever. Yeah, not fun. Um, but after that, uh, after I'd gone ahead and done whatever with the inner drum, you know, drag the 4.1 kg inner drum out. It was really bad. I've actually put the machine on my toll, so I might as well just go and do a demo of that. You, you'll probably, you'll possibly hear the little buzz from it, and it's really cool. Um, it used to do it on heating as well, but it doesn't really do that anymore. <laughs> Oh god. Uh, so yeah, there's where is that? Oh yeah, the inner drum. So I pulled the inner drum out and basically projectile nearly projectile vomited from stress because I just knew that it wasn't gonna do anything. Like the 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 state the drum was in was just absolutely shot 
and I do think it is going to be similar. I'm not happy with it. I don't really understand what to do with it. Um, I've tried lemon juice. Yeah, I've tried lemon juice, WD-40, vinegar, all that, and it it worked a hell of a lot. I Brillo padded it, so it's scratched to fuck now, which doesn't matter because you know inner drums fine if. Oh, what a beauty. Yeah, so inner drums, as I said, are really bad because they rust at times. It's really rare to find them rusty, and this was the one time where it couldn't be rusty at all. And yet, it had to be. So, there was that. Uh, I ended up rest I've ended up restoring it, sort of, I don't know, last year or something. And it's sitting in the machine now. New bearing set and whatever. But, on the bright side, I'm hopefully going to be able to get a front plate at some point. If anyone has any recommendations or any links to front plates, hit me up. Because on this YouTube channel, on my Instagram, at MatthewJones9560, and, you know, whatever else. Well, not on Facebook. You'll be fine just on Instagram. Follow me on there, and if you already follow me, then just message me with the link or something, or comment here on this video and whatever. And yeah, wish me luck, because it's going to be painful. So yeah, there's that. But onward from that, onward from that little story. Let me go ahead and whack the light off. The light's really annoying. That's the actual buzz of this mains light. Anyone get the vibe of the Safeton Cap good run? You know, the 14 kg washer that I think it was Mila Boy filmed or something. And while that thing was heating, you just heard the insane buzz. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Rinse hold off. It's gonna advance now, there it is. So yeah, there's that. Blah, 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 blah. Um, hopefully this thing doesn't fly into the spin. I haven't done anything. I haven't advanced it. I've just let it go itself. And hopefully this thing does not do what I hope. I hope this thing does not fly into, this, fly into a 500 RPM spin with water. Because 9.5s do that are not fun. When a 9.5 does it, it's not fun. When any, when nearly anything else does it, it's slightly enjoyable. But, it, but when a 9.5 does it, it just causes trouble. Luckily, that's okay. Oh yeah, that'll go. Yeah, so there's that. And blah, blah, blah. Whatever, whatever, whatever. Yeah, so. Hmm. Yeah, still got a lot of work to do. Did it go? <laughs> this thing really loves to nearly jump. She gets ever so close to it. That's the first burst. I don't know if it advances. I don't know if it does a second burst. Oh, click and then just, just the click and she goes straight back into distribution. Well, the time has just advanced. That should be going to speed now. I'm not too sure. I genuinely do not know. The time has just advanced. I do not have a damn clue. I don't know if it, if it, if a nine, if they're meant to do. A 500 RPM burst and then just sort of sit on distribution or something? I've got no idea. I'll just run a cotton spin then, I guess. Just wait for the cycle to finish. I swear they're meant to go to a thousand. I'm not sure. Oh well. Um, don't know. This thing just literally just advanced. Oh, there it is. There it is, that took a while. What was that all about? 
That took a goddamn while, that did. What? I don't even get scared by these machines. Oh, so it just does a tiny little, like, 15, like, 10 second or so, 500 RPM burst, and then just comes all the way back down to, like, distribution or something. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> that was weird um but anyway thanks for watching and i will see you in the next one goodbye